This is a crayon drawing. And this is the one-of-a-kind GIF that I transformed it into using Lightburn's trace feature. You may have seen something similar on Etsy for handwritten recipes, drawings, or handwritten notes like these. And if you ask me, these are phenomenal gifts that capture something truly personal, the gift giver's handwriting. But while Lightburn's trace feature does most of the heavy lifting, you'll need three other things to make this type of project. You'll need two different colors of laser-ready plywood, power and speed settings for that plywood, plus an extra trick that's going to make assembling the pieces super easy. But before we get to all that, we first need to figure out how to get this drawing into Lightburn. The good news is that's really easy to do. It's just as simple as taking a photo on your phone and then sending it to your computer. Next with Lightburn now open, we can just find our folder where we have that picture on our computer and then click and drag it into our Lightburn workspace. And then we're going to just select that, right click on it and go down to trace image. And now that we have trace image open, we just have a couple of things to do. And one thing I should point out is that a lot of times you can greatly simplify what you're doing with a handwritten or hand-drawn image like this by just simply clicking sketch trace, because as you'll see, it does a bunch of cleanup. See those corner things are now gone. It does a bunch of cleanup for you. But since this was made with a crayon, a lot of times what I've found is that it leaves too much white space. And so the engraving comes out really light. And so I'm not going to be using the sketch trace for that reason. And instead, I'm just going to adjust the threshold and ignore less than boxes until I get a outline with the pink, uh, the pink image here to something that looks good that's going to engrave dark in my material. After fiddling around with this for a bit, I've decided that a threshold around 100 and an ignore less than a 5 is going to be what works best for me. And I'm going to make sure my delete image after trace is checked on, and then I'll click OK. This now gives us a vector of our image trace here, but what you might find is that there might be a few little bits, like this little thing next to the L here, that are just stray little things from the piece of paper and the image. And so what we could do to get rid of those is just simply select the entire trace, click ungroup, that will ungroup everything, and then we can go through and select, and then just hit the delete key to get rid of those pesky bits. With the cleanup all done, I'm just going to select everything and regroup it, and then that just leaves one thing to do in our design, and that is the frame. And that's pretty simple to do if you know the tools, and so first I used the rectangle tool to create a rectangle, and then I resized it to roughly the size of an 8x10 picture frame. Next I used the radius tool in order to round out the corners, and I used the default of 0.394 inches for that round radius. Next, once I had it all rounded out, I created a copy because we need a front and a back. And then I used the offset tool for the front piece so that I could create an interior rectangle that's about an inch wide. And then I also rounded out those corners with the same radius. And now that I've put together my two different frame pieces here, you can tell that what's on top is the front and what is on the bottom is the back. But now we need to make sure that our engraving is actually going to fit inside the bounds of our front frame piece. And so I'm just resizing it here to make sure that that's going to fit. And now that we know that it fits in the front piece, where we actually want this is on the back piece. And so I'm just going to simply move this down here, select both shapes, and center it. Now that we have our two main shapes put together here, we still need to make sure that they are separated because we're using two different colors, if you'll remember. At the front, we're going to use uh, walnut, and for the back, we're going to use birch. And so I need to make sure, as a result, that these are on different layers. So let's start with the back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the engraved portion of the back, and that's going to be one layer. So I'll just put that on blue layer one, and then I need a cut for the outline, so that will be red layer two. And then for the rest of this, I'm just going to, since it's both a cut here, I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these on layer three. And that also means we can delete our original layer here, the gray. So I'll get rid of that. And now with our layers assigned, we basically just have to do one more thing with the design, which is to punch in the power and speed settings. As always, you can run a material test to get the right settings for your project, but in my case, I've already worked with these materials quite a few times, and so I know that the material uh, settings that I'm going to want in this case are just going to be 10,000 and 80% power for a birch engrave, and then uh, for this is going to be eighth inch birch, and I know for that I want a power of 450 and a speed of 90 and a pass count of one, and then this up here is going to be uh, walnut, uh, but because it's relatively close to the same thickness, then I'm going to use actually the same settings because in my experience it cuts about the same. 
and all of these are for my 40 watt diode laser. And with our design pretty much put together here, now it's time to grab our plywood. And that brings me to the trick that I mentioned earlier. This is a specific line of 3M adhesive that I've been using for months in my laser business. It's easy to apply to the back of the plywood sheets and you'll see later just how well it works for assembling this kind of project. But before we get to that, we of course need to cut out our pieces. And so now I'll go ahead and focus my laser, put on my laser safety glasses, turn on the laser and the exhaust system. Then back on the computer, I'll do a final preview to make sure everything looks okay. And then I'll go ahead and frame the project. And once everything is aligned properly, I'll just go ahead and close big blue and then start the job. At this point, you might be wondering about air assist. And for this engraved portion of the project, I do not have my air assist on because I found that for engravings, it's usually cleaner to have no air assist. However, for the cut, I will flick on the air assist pump. After it finished, I used an X-Acto knife to hit off a couple small snags. Here's what it looked like. Not bad, right? Pretty fun. But that is when I nearly made a mistake that cost me a big chunk of nice and expensive maple wood but I was saved by the preview tool because you see, I didn't notice before that I had my cut number two set to fill. And so I went ahead and previewed it, noticed the problem and then fixed it by changing it to line. And then I was ready to go. So then I went ahead and cut out my piece of walnut by repeating several of the same steps that we already did for birch. Okay, this one cut out nice and clean looks like. Just one little snag, but it's looking good. That's gonna be a nice frame outline. I'm excited to put this together. Now this is where we're gonna see just how great this adhesive on the back is. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel this off and we don't need any hardware at all. We literally can just use this adhesive. Uh, but the thing is you gotta make sure this doesn't happen. You gotta make sure it doesn't get stuck while, while you're taking it off. So let me just do this. And then, so we get that off of there. It's as le easy as just throwing it on top. And I should mention before we stick this on there, if you had uh, rough wood or if you just didn't like the finish on there quite so much, you could also sand this down before doing this step. But then all we gotta do is just make sure it's nice and level. And for this, actually, let's use a square. Let's be smart. <laughs> Use a square to help us out. Not bad, huh? And since you made it all the way to the end of the video, I know that you care about what gets posted on my channel. And so I have a quick question for you. Did you like this new style of video where I highlight a specific light burn feature by using it to make an actual project? Or instead, have you preferred some of the other styles of videos I've made in the past? Either way, let me know in the comments because at the end of the day, I make these videos for you guys and I wanna make sure they're valuable. Thanks for watching.